at just 14 years old, my first job was for a beer wholesaler, beer capital distributing. Hey, what else do you expect for a kid from Milwaukee? Before my first payday, I multiplied my hours worked by my pay rate of 425 per hour and looked forward to my first paycheck. Of course, when I got my check, it was lower than the number I had calculated. I was initially appalled. Why was the government taking my hard earned money? Welcome to reality. I remember a coworker saying, part of the price of living, playing and working in our country is paying taxes. Of course, over time, I accepted and realized in order to have some sense of social security, in order for us to have a functioning country, we have to pay taxes. The words of a former Supreme Court Justice, Oliver Wendell Holmes come to mind. I like paying taxes because it buys me civilization. Now, now fast forward a bit to the year 2016, most of which I had worked part time and did not work at all in the summer because my ministry was transitioning to here in Canton. Yet, I still paid more federal income taxes than Donald Trump did. The Midas touch businessman, though not really a Midas touch successful businessman, but he did play one on TV. I suspect most of us, if not all of us paid more federal income taxes than he did in 2016 and 2017 and many other years. Look, something is wrong with our system. If Trump and others like him can get away with paying little to no federal income taxes. I believe in progressive taxing. The rich and wealthy should pay more taxes because, hey, you can afford it. It was society as a whole that made people rich and they, the rich, should pay back into our collective. This is not communism. This is common sense. Cutting taxes on the rich and corporations they, it just does not trickle down. Actually, when the rich are not taxed, wealth accumulates at the top and stays there. The next big uh, tax shock to me was when I bought my first house here in Canton and I didn't realize how high property taxes would be. Here in Canton, and I suspect other places, most of our property tax dollars go to schools and some of it goes to libraries. I can't imagine better institutions to support than schools and libraries. We need to have an educated population for democracy to have a chance. When we pay our taxes, we are saying we live in an ecology a web of connections, a civilization, if you will, with a future and a present that needs schools, needs libraries. Not only is paying our taxes the mature and adult thing to do, it is the American and civic thing to do. When we pay taxes, we do get something in return. Sewers, sidewalks, social rights, civilization, sturdy bridges, bike lanes, credentialed teachers, community safety, water we can drink, air we can safely breathe. And I don't want more individual rights. I do not need to be free from any restraint and restriction. I want more social rights. And I think it is through paying taxes progressive taxes that we can achieve this. So give me a welfare state. Hell, 
Give me a nanny state, whatever you want to call it. Just don't give me a state of income equality and poverty. Paying our taxes can be a joy. Now, each week since I was a small child, I remember giving some of my allowance into uh, small white sealable envelopes with red numbers. I gave this every Sunday to the church my, me and my family attended. Uh, when I was older and became a Unitarian Universalist, the minister told the new member group about the expectation of pledging. And when asked what amount it should be, he eventually said something, well, at least three to 5% of your income. If you can't commit to $25 a month, maybe this isn't the right place for you. Now, some did not like that answer, but for me, I was challenged. I had never thought ahead before. I'd always just given what I had left in my pocket, but I thought about all that I received and yeah, for just over $5 a Sunday service, uh, that's actually a pretty good deal. Making that first pledge actually made me more committed because I wanted to get my money's worth. I rarely missed a Sunday. This was my home, my people, and I am connected to them as we share our talents and resources. For my pledge, and for my pledge now, I get a beautiful building, ministers, other religious professionals, opportunities to pass on our living tradition to the next generation, small group ministries, and the ability to come to worship as myself, to be myself, and yet be challenged to live better and feel the spirit of life with my people. In other words, paying a pledge pays for itself. Our religion is a bit like sunshine, like an infinite net where we weekly, weekly celebrate the gospel of interconnection. We pursue a collective salvation of meaning and wholeness in this life, this world, this nation, this community, one congregation at a time. Being part of a congregation convinces us that we are part and parcel of the universe. In other words, when we pledge, we get what we pay for. Every time we pay our taxes, when we participate in worship, pay our pledges, we are transcending the self, transcending the ego. And we are seeing behind our differences into a greater diversity, a shared spark of humanity, which like jewels shine all stuck in a web. It is not just a duty, the adult thing to do to support our religious community. It is our love, our joy, our legacy. It is for ourselves and for a web of connections on and into the future. Just the simple fact that we are a congregation shows me that life is worth it that the universe is a loving place and that despite our differences, there is somehow unity to life, to it all. In past years at this time, I would normally ask you to pledge because we want to hire a new staff member or start a new program. This is a different kind of year. I'm simply asking you to pledge so we can sustain and strengthen our web. In our proposed 2021 draft budget for next year, staff is not getting a raise, a raise, which is 
pretty much to be expected in our economic climate. We have less projected income, less cash offerings, no building use fees and no fundraiser events. We're most likely gonna lose a special gift. And as happens every year, sometimes members move away. Even if we keep our budget basically flat, we have to raise about $10,000 more than we did last year. Since we don't have much else we can reduce in our budget, if we don't reach our goal, we may have to reduce hours of staff. So believers in progressive taxing, mature adults, joyful givers, lovers of this congregation, if you can afford it, please pledge a little more this year. Now, it's really odd and eerie to be in this old building all alone on a Sunday morning. It's chilly, thermostats have been turned down, the rainbow welcome sign has torn and fallen off from the windstorm. Sometimes I get here early and listen and you can't even hear the clocks ticking because no one is here to wind them or to change the batteries in them. Not even the occasional hum of the refrigerator kicking in because we just unplugged it. But when I listen, truly deeply listen in the silence of this building, I imagine people talking. I see the hard oak pews full. I see blown in brown leaves by the door. I smell coffee brewing. I see kids running fast with crackers and grapes in their hands. The imagined people and I wonder together about the future of Unitarian Universalism. How many small congregations maybe won't make it through this pandemic? And as I look around and read the names on the plaques and the windows, I realize a line goes through to us, to this moment. Coots, Marsh, Wheelock, Blanchard, Miller, Galasinski, Romer, Conkey, Gaines, Remington, Goodrich, Farmer, Gunnison, Beekman, Wyckoff, Pinchon, Montan, Whitaker, Coffin, Hunkins, and go ahead, fill in your last name here. A line goes back and moves forward through us in this home of ours of a natural faith full of honest and humble hearted people who try to have some sort of spiritual sustenance, who try to make a fair, more just world, who love each other and want us, the people together, united. Giving back to this community is not a duty, but it is an honor. It is a joy to strengthen this web of ours. This is our congregation. We, we are the owners of it. This congregation is part of our lives. It is who we are. Our identity is linked to its mission and vision. It is a joy to support that which you freely love. It is a joy to support that which promotes your values it is a joy to be committed to other people. It is a joy to be part and parcel of an interconnected web. It is a joy to make sure our beloved faith community is available to those who pass along this line long after we have gone. It is a joy to pledge. Amen. 
and blessed be.